Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to look at a film called The Secret of the Roan Inish. Now, this is a film adaptation of a book that was originally published in 1957 called, I'm going to pull up the name here because I'm going to mispronounce it, called The Secret of the Ron Moore Scurry, mispronouncing that, by Rosalie K. Fry, which I didn't mention when I did the book review, the name of the author. Um, Fixing that here, I'll add it in the description of that um, video. So this uh, film starts off with a young girl by the name of Fiona. Um, it start, takes place in 1946, so just after the war. She's relatively young. She walks into an Irish pub, I believe it's in Dublin. And she looks kind of sickly, and she's kind of there by herself, well not really by herself, seeing an older sibling, implied that she has an older brother. And the barmaid said she looks, that she probably, this was no place for her. She should be sent to live with the old people, back with her grandparents for a while, um, which would be a better place for a child like this. And so she's sent back to the coastal town where her grandparents are living, um, near where she had been born, this island called the Roan Inish, which was little islands out on the, off the coast. And so she goes to stay with her grandparents. Um, the other person who stays with them is her cousin, Eamon. Um, he's roughly about 16. He, he's very much attract, attached to the sea and to the land. Um, her grandmother kind of tells her about her mother, because she doesn't really remember. Her mother died when she was relatively young and talks about why they left the island. So her mother came from the mainland. Her mother's name was Bridget. And her father, look for my child. Uh, the drawbacks of filming when your child is sleeping. Um, but her grand, her father had found her on the main, uh, on the mainland, and brought her to the island. Only her mother, whose name was Bridget, and I mentioned she was brought on her. She was in town on uh, basically her namesake day, on Saint Bridget's day, and she was getting things. And uh, he. Uh, Fiona's father was there selling fish and they fell in love and she came back to the islands but she wasn't prepared for the harshness of them so she had several children um, her last being a little boy by the name of Jamie and then she died and she was last to be buried on the island and the young people wanted to leave including her father and there was basically they just they wanted the opportunities on the mainland so they pushed the old people and to leave. And she was really young. And then her brother Jamie was in his cradle, which was um, shaped like a boat, floated like a boat, more on that. <laughs> and essentially floated away. He was maybe like two, which is terrifying for a parent of a child who, as of this filming, is just about two. So, she comes back there, she kind of learns about what happened, and he was taken off essentially by the seals. And later she's kind of in, in the little town, and she interacts with another member of their family who's considered one of the dark ones. People think he's a little weird, and he kind of talks to her. He's like, this is kind of the legend of their family. And it's like, a lot of people think like very strange, because he's very, he knows where all the good fish, fishing is. He's very connected to the sea. I can't remember what his name is, but um, she mentions her cousin, her brother Jamie. He's like, leave him alone. He's with the seals. But then he tells, you hear the background of her family. So essentially there was this young man who, he was different in the fact that he fought. They were trying to, um, actually this is the English, force them to speak English in the school rather than their uh, native Irish and he rebelled against this quite a bit he got he didn't want to uh, basically speak English he wanted to stick to his land he became an adult and eventually was out one day and you kind of it has a recreation of this where he sees a seal take off its skin and reveal a woman and he knows what she is. So this is based off uh, Irish and Celtic legends of the Selkie, which are just what you described. They are seals who can take off their skin and transform into 
humans. In this case, mostly it's women. And so he steals the skin and her and brings her home with him as his wife. And she spoke a strange language. She was very, very weird. She had a bunch of children to him. She had him make this cradle um, that was more like a boat made out of uh, wood they could from the ships. And that's how she would rock her children to sleep. And it shows that one day one of her children noticed like, why does I keep this old seal skin here? And she goes and finds it and leaves. Essentially, she returns to the sea and abandons the family. Even though apparently, though apparently they always keep an eye on things. The seals are connected because this is their family. And this is the generations of their family, of the Roan Inish. Um, and they're descendant from these Selkies. And most of the family looks, Fiona herself is blonde hair, blue eyed, they look normal Irish. But then you'll get some of the dark ones who have black hair and dark mysterious eyes and they're very good with the sea. And that's what Jamie was. And so Fiona goes out with her grandparents after hearing this. They go back to the island and she checks out the cottages and things and sees in her old cottage that there's shells set up and it looks like there's a tea set. And she actually had peered in and seen her little brother having tea with a seal. And um, then she, he runs off and he, she, he won't come to her. She talks to her cousin, Eamon, and particularly right after they hear that their grandparents, the house that they're renting is, eventually they're being kicked out. So they're gonna have to find a place to live and they're gonna have to really go to the mainland because I think this is a much larger um, island. So, and there's no really place to stay. Um, in the film, I believe it said that they're going to turn it into holiday colleges because people want to holiday there. So the Eamon and Fiona go back to the island and they start cleaning up the cottages and putting things back, painting, fixing the thatches on the roof, getting everything cleaned up because they can convince their grandparents to move back. Now Eamon already always intended to do so. Once he was a man, he intended to go back to the islands. So they clean up the cottages and then essentially they convince their grandparents, partially with their grandmother, tell them it's like, I've, we, I've seen Jamie. He's still alive, he's with the seals. We intentionally, if we, and she's like, you know, it's like, if I believe if we go home, the seals will give him back to us, essentially. And so they go back, there's gonna be this big storm this night. So the grandmother takes charge, gets everything they need, get in the boat, get back to the island. And they, they realized what the children had done and they cleaned everything up and made the homes habitable again. So, and painted everything and they're able to get the seaweed and stuff and start soup. And as the storm comes, uh, you see Jamie in his little cradle boat uh, being pushed ashore and he gets out but then he sees them and he tries to run but the seals won't let him. They're pushing him back onto shore and the grandmother kneels down, calls to him, holding out blankets, and he runs to her. And they wrap him up in the blankets and they bring him back in. And they give him soup and his sister cuddles him and it's like, you are home now. And we'll teach you to talk and we'll live at the sea. And that's how the story ends. It's a very cute story. Um, it's very simple. Um, there's not much depth to it. It's very much a story with the intent of nature makes you healthier because it's definitely implied that Fiona had been sick because she was in the city with the smog and the industrialization and she's healthier and happier back on the coasts um, with the family and with the fishing and with kind of some of the old traditional ways. So that's kind of the point of the story. Now the differences with the book, the big thing is the film takes place in Ireland. The book takes place in Scotland. So different location entirely. Uh, her cousin's name is not Eamon in the book. It's uh, Rory. So, and it's not, a, I don't, older siblings are not mentioned in the book at all. It's her father. And they kind of just, you literally start off with her uh, coming back on the boat. That's how it starts. Um, and the cottage isn't being sold for 
uh, being a holiday cottage, the owner needs it for his son, who is married and has a job on that island. And essentially, they have a month to they have a month to leave. And there is no men. You don't get the backstory of the mother at all, um, or really even the full backstory of the Selkies. And it's just kind of implied that this distant ancestor had come back to the island from this like rocky seal coast with a woman that he was naming his wife and there is that pretty much that was the end of it and that was the children who were periodically dark and they were always good with the sea so there's no more background to it the film adds this background to it which is really interesting I enjoy this film um, it was mostly filmed, I think, in Donegal, Scotland. Um, at least certainly that's where it takes place. Uh, let's see. And again, the book takes place in Ireland. So, and let's see. Um, it's actually uh, the filmmaker shot in this Naren, which is a small seaside village in the parish of, I'm mispronouncing this thing, Andrea in the southwest coast of County Donegal in Ireland um, so it's craggy low hills so um, and let's see apparently Rhone in the Irish Ron Innish it means island of seals so that fits in with the story kind of thing there's not much else to say about this I really do enjoy this film the acting is very simple the story is very simple the um, filmography is beautiful you do get this kind of message and this is the same with the book of coming back to nature and returning and that not ne that it's not necessarily a good idea to leave for the city that that can lead to detriment in the case of Fiona being ill and that you need to return to your roots and this young generation wanting to return in the book the other thing that's mentioned with um Rory is that his siblings intend to come home. They in, his, but that he's always intended to go back to the island and his siblings intend to join them once they're finished with school. So it's very much the family of the are coming back. That next younger generation of children, it was their parents who wanted to, who pressured both the old people and then dragged their children to the city. And that that younger generation with their connection to their grandparents want to come home. And then you have the whole story of Jamie and the seals. And yeah, that's in the book. This little toddler, which terrifies me as the mother of an actual toddler. My child being carried out to sea by seals. But it's a beautiful story. It's very, very cute. It's very, very fun. I don't think it's all that long. The book is extant under 100 pages. The film, let's see, I'm holding it here. Let me look on the back, see if it's going to tell me. It's under two hours. It's a little over. It's about an hour and 85 minutes, so I think that's what I'm reading. No, that's the dimensions. Oops. I am not. It's 120 minutes, so yeah, under two hours. So it's a cute little film. Um, so I enjoy it. I would highly recommend it. It's a family film. Definitely a family film. Um, let's see if I can look on this thing. PG. PG writing. Hey. Where's my rating here? Normally, yeah, it's PG. So, it's not quite G. I don't know if things are really rated G these, year, these days. But, of course, there's a little bit of strong language because you have Fiona interacting with this kind of dark one. He's mysterious. And he's kind of hard. But, and then, of course, you have a little toddler who's being taken off by seals. Which is terrifying to me, again, as a mother of a toddler. <laughs> so... But I really do enjoy this film. I would highly recommend it as a family film if your children are into nature and seals and almost, in this case, Irish folklore because both the book and the film talk about the legends of the Selkies and these transforming creatures from seals to human. So, again, the film gives a little bit more background. The book is really simple, so you miss out on Mother's Story and the full background of their family with these dark ones. So, and in fact, even the very beginning is um, not in the book where why she's coming there or her father's illness or anything. So, I enjoy this book. Again, this film and the book, I recommend both. Um, get a hold of both. 
Uh, definitely a good family film if you're wanting to sit down and kind of watch something that's interesting. Uh, some people would probably call it a little slow. I mean, it's not a big action film. It's this kind of, there's a little bit more drama with Fiona, I think, at one point in time, going out on her own to the island, though I believe that happens in the book as well, um, and wanting to reconnect. So that's why I love it. I love reconnecting to nature. I'm a big nature person. I like being out in nature. So um, it's not fun in the summer for me where I live because it's really, really hot. So I'm not able to connect with trees and nature and things of that sort. So oh, water. this is what happens when you have a toddler and a small child. Well, this is okay, just our toddler. Um, they're they are exhausting. <laughs> so I end up yawning because I'm filming this at night because that's when my child sleeps. I would, again, I love this. It's a great film. I love kind of the Irish legends. I love the book. It's really cute. It's not fast paced at all. It's kind of, I wouldn't say it meanders, but it's just a simple, easy, happy family film about togetherness and coming back to nature and returning to kind of the old ways. So that's it for this review. I'm not going to go much further because um, there's not much more to say. Again, highly recommended. I will link the description uh, to the film in the description. I will link an Amazon link to the, to the film in the description as I do with most of these reviews. Uh, be sure to check out the book review which came out Monday. Um, so this, as most of my film reviews, film reviews come out Friday, my book reviews come out on Mondays. Um, be sure to check out the rest of my stuff. Um, I have a lot of uh, children's book reviews, uh, various film reviews, nothing um, current, because again, I got a small child. Uh, seeing new things is not really possible when you have a child that young. Not to mention, I just don't have the time to go sitting in theaters all that often. The last film I actually saw was the biographical film of Mr. Rogers. And I think that's because of our air conditioning broke. That was before the birth of our child. So we were getting out of the house pretty late because it was summer and hot. So um, along with the book and film reviews, I have a mixture of the splattering of some homeschooling stuff. We do, um, even though our child is relatively young, we are homeschoolers from the start for travel reasons. Uh, we do not do religious stuff. We are not religious. Therefore, all my homeschooling stuff is non-religious, aka secular. Um, and it's sprinkling of child travel reviews here and there. And a bunch of other stuff planned. I have a whole bunch of other plans. If you want to figure out what yeah, my intention are, you can check out my introduction video. Otherwise, like and subscribe. I have a bunch more stuff planned. I have a bunch of stuff on my playlist that you can check out now. Thank you.